sports are bad for people. Hi, I'm Antoinette. I'm going to be talking about the positives of sports and why they outweigh the negatives. My name is Dahlia, and I'm going to talk about how certain helmets from football do not, do not um, decrease the risk of getting concussions than others. Hi, I'm Marina, and I'm going to be talking about why football helmets make me a football safe. Some people say that sports are helping people's health, and I agree, but I believe that sports are doing more bad than good. Because first of all, sports will most likely cause injuries to players, and as a result of those injuries, it will affect people's education as well. One reason is that sports will cause injuries on different scales from causing bruises to concussions. The Sanford Children's Hospital says that more than 775,000 children, ages 14 and younger, are treated in hospital emergency room for sport-related injuries each year. Most of the injuries occurred as a result of falls, being struck by an object, collision, or overexertion during unorganized or form informal sport activity. This shows that sports are unsafe and people are being harmed by it. The last reason is that injuries are affecting people's education. Pain and injuries will avert students' focus from the homework or class time. For example, when she quickly became a regular at the school's nurse's office, complaining of dizziness and severe headaches, driven by the noise and chaos of the halls and lunchroom. By overhead rejections used in classrooms and by long days and nights of books and homework. It's true that sports will give people the daily exercise and let people have fun, but injuries that affect both their physical and mental health will overshadow the good benefits. In conclusion, sports will are most likely do more harm to people rather than help them, like most people say. It's certainly true that there are risks to sports. With 3.5 million injuries a year, it's no news that every sport has its risks. But that's it. Every sport has its risks. Just because there are risks to something doesn't mean it should be taken away. Low-risk sports are options for kids who want to have, who want less chances of getting injured, such as gymnastics and swimming. There are also alternatives for certain sports, such as flag football rather than tackle. There are many ways for kids to stay safer, safer playing sports as well. Kids Health suggests that kids who are playing sports should wear protective gear, such as helmets, protective pads, and other gear, warm up and cool down, know the rules of the game, watch out for other players, and don't play when you're injured. It's not the sport's fault if a child gets injured while playing, while not following these rules. Also, non-competitive sports such as skateboarding and bicycling are, are just as susceptible to head injuries as competitive sports are. But we don't tell kids that they can't ride a bike, we just tell them that they can't, that they should wear a helmet and take safety precautions. Why can't we do the same for sports? Furthermore, there are huge physical benefits to playing sports. With one third of high schoolers in America that are overweight or obese, and the top three reasons people die being linked to obesity, which is more than doubled in the past 30 years, people need a way to stay active. According to a study published in the journal Pediatrics, if all adolescents played at least two sports per year, in other words, one team per season, then the obesity rate would plunge by 26%. Taking away sports would only discourage kids from staying active and could have very negative effects. Nothing can do for America what sports can in relation to obesity. Kids aren't going to start going to the gyms. It's not realistic. Sports are a realistic and enjoyable way for kids to get the exercise they so direly need. It is commonly believed that certain helmets for football reduce the risk of getting concussion better than others, but the truth is that they don't. Usually, when people say that they believe helmets can reduce the risk of getting a concussion, they probably don't know how concussions happen. A concussion is a minor traumatic brain injury that may occur when the head hits an object or a moving object strikes the head. There is no way to keep the brain from bouncing around inside your head. The only thing helmets can protect against are head abrasions and bruises. A study was done by researchers from the University of Wisconsin to figure out the rate of the rate of concussions for players wearing riddle helmets, the most popular brand in the study, was 9.5%. The rate of concussions for wearing shut helmets was 8.1%. And the rate for players wearing Xenic helmets was 6.7%. Those rates are statistically indistinguishable from one another. The differences are so small that they go unnoticed. There was no difference in the severity of the concussion between some brands either. Despite what manufacturers might claim, newer and more expensive equipment may not reduce concussion risk. Often, the manufacturers say that they have done laboratory research with trained professionals, but, they, but that is usually not the case. Although they may claim it, they most likely have not. This brings up the fact that many brands, such as Riddle, use branding on NFL helmets to promote their products. 
this caused people to think that because the NFL uses it, they should too. The only, and although they may think this, it is not necessarily true. The only reason that NFL uses Riddle helmets is because of the contract that was made, not because they chose to. But Riddle is currently being sued by multiple NFL players for not disclosing, and in some instances, allegedly hiding risks of repeated head injuries. This shows that even the most popular brand is, does not decrease the risk of getting concussions. Therefore, if you ever need, if you ever need to buy a helmet, don't go for the expensive helmets. They will not do you any better than the inexpensive ones will. There is no helmet that will reduce the risk of, of concussions better than others. Some people think that football helmets will cause athletes, or uh, will make athletes think they have an exaggerated sense of safety, which might make them, so, make them throw, throw themselves into dangerous positions, such as charging with their head. Others believe that football helmets make the game of football safer and more enjoyable for thousands of athletes around the globe. I belong to the latter group because of the decline rates of injuries and deaths over the years. One reason I think helmets make sports safer is the decreased rate of injuries over the a research affiliate in MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics believes, as we better understand the physiology of concussions and other head and brain injuries, helmet design will continue to evolve, and the incidence and severity of such injuries will be reduced even more. The opinions expert proves that injuries are happening less and less often, and when they do happen, they are much less severe. His statement agrees with the new study, published in the Journal of Neurosurgery. Compared to Leatherheads, New helmets are indeed much more effective at protecting the human head. Researchers from Virginia Tech came to the finding by using an automated head impact simulation system to test the effectiveness of a pair of vintage Hutch H18 leather helmets from the 1930s against 10 plastic helmets currently in use and found that depending on the force of the impact, modern helmets reduced the concussion risk by anywhere from 45 to 96 percent. This study was conducted in 2011, and I think that now, in 2015, the helmets would reduce the risk of concussions even more. Another reason I think helmets make sports safer is the decline of football-related deaths. When asked if helmets decrease these deaths, an engineer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology replied, Today's helmets do a great job protecting players from injuries such collisions might cause, from skull fractures to subdural hematomas, and advances in their construction and design have reduced football-related deaths to virtually zero over the past 20 years. This is important because it shows that helmets don't just protect from concussions, but also from more serious and life-threatening injuries. It also states that deaths have decreased over time, and I believe that given a few years, football-related deaths will stop completely. According to a study conducted by the Youth Sports Safety Alliance, there were 120 sports-related deaths of young athletes in 2008 to 2009. 49 in 2010, and 39 in 2011. This statistic shows that the rate of deaths due to sports is declining. In a year, deaths went from 120 to 49, and within another year, as technology and helmet design became more advanced, the number of deaths went from 49 to 39. I have no doubt that these numbers have continued to drop as our understanding of sports and the risks that come with it increases. As football helmets, becomes, as football helmets become more and more advanced, the number of deaths from sports will come will continue to drop. Some people might say that plastic football helmets um, will make football players throw themselves into dangerous situations. They say we should return to the leatherheads. However, leatherheads are just a snug hat with ear flaps. They leave the drain vulnerable and the face exposed. It might make players think twice before throwing themselves into dangerous situations, but it definitely won't protect them from accidental injuries. This is why we shouldn't return. Football helmets make the game of football so much safer. Over the years, football helmets have gone from leatherheads to plastic helmets with face guards, and I know that helmet design will continue to improve until football players face no risk of injury or death. I think all football players should wear the newest and most advanced helmets available. They should also educate themselves and their health, and the helmets that eliminate the risk of harm to their life.